Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mithias's metal etching class. Uh, hopefully, everybody was able to see the handout uh, that was posted. That is some of the materials I'll be using for today in the class. Okay. So before we start, I want to tell everybody uh, that this is going to be an electro metal etching class, which means we'll be using electricity as one of the items for this. Okay, so please take that into mind when before we start. Um, I want everybody to be careful and not get hurt as we're doing this. Okay, so let's just go over what um, materials we're going to be using for today. Okay, uh, make sure that you have, of course, the metal you're going to be etching for today. We're going to be using a piece of stainless steel. Okay, uh, do not mind the paint you see on here. I was also using this to uh, test out some colors for something I was working on. Okay. Uh, you will of course need a stencil. Okay. Right here we have our stencil that we'll be using for today. Okay. Uh, because of the screen, I apologize if you can't see it too well because of the screen. I'm going to try to tilt this a little bit more so it gets out of the light of the screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is actually going to be a, it's, you can't really see that well and I apologize. Uh, let me move this, let me move the webcam down a little bit, make that build see a little better, okay? Now let me see, okay. It is a phoenix. So I'm going to work with uh, the lighting on the side, I apologize again for that, okay? Uh, we're also, of course, going to have the power source today, the electrical power source, which in this case is going to be a battery charger. Okay. Um, you do not have to use battery charger, obviously. Uh, there are other ways to do it with electrical sources. One of them is going to be uh, using a battery, and I'll be explaining that to you before as we go into the class. Uh, you're going to need, of course, your, uh, your cotton scrubs, your Q-tips. Okay, you don't have to use Q-tips, you can use any cotton swabs you like, okay? I'm gonna be using just these right here, okay? I have an entire box right next to me. Uh, that is because it's better to have too many than not enough, okay? You also are gonna need a cup to use. I'm using a glass one right here, okay? And the reason for that is because uh, glass is one of the better things to use whenever you're working with just any crafting. Uh, for one thing, it's easier to see through. Uh, this case, I'm using a uh, champagne glass because of the fact of the way the bowl is, it's a wide bowl, which makes it very a lot easier to get the tool into for the etching. I want to be able to uh, do that without any problems, obviously, because we're using a mixture of both a liquid and electrical uh, tool base for this. Okay, you have your table salt, okay, All right? Just normal table salt, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. In fact, you do not want to use something like uh, rock salt or anything because if you were to use, because those are things, uh, they're not gonna break down as fast and you want that breakdown so it gets into the liquid component easier and more quickly, okay? Now, I'm using a small shot glass for this. I'm just using a little paper shot, little, you know, plastic shot glass you find in stores. They're very easy to use um, and uh, find, okay? We have a measuring cup for the water, okay? okay? This is a quarter or a 60 milliliter measuring cup, okay? Have our water, okay? You don't need very much water for this, all right? You can get by with about four ounces, okay? Uh, about 125 milliliters, give or take. Uh, okay, you want to also have your surface that you work on. I'm using a piece of uh, pine right here. And the reason is obviously you don't want to do anything that can mess up a table or something like that, all right? So, oh, um, also, of course, you want your stencil. For the stencil today, I decided I'm going to use vinyl. Vinyl is really good. It's a thicker type of material. It adheres better 
to the surfaces that you're going to be etching on, whether that is electro etching or chemical etching, such as glass. You want to use something that will adhere very well to the subject being etched because you do not want there to be any way that the um, the liquid that's being used on it can seep under the design that you're using because you if you, that happens then whatever your design you're trying to put into the item is not going to turn out the way you want it to okay now i'm using i apologize for this i'm actually using uh a let's see if you can see this it is a uh is a cricket okay it's just for vinyl you can pick these up uh these up any craft store okay they're about like five and a half dollars okay and you get a roll of 12 inches by 48 inches so about one foot by four foot sections but that you can do an amazing amount of crafting okay uh, another thing is of course not alcohol uh the rubbing alcohol i am using of course these little swabs, they're great, they're perfect. Um, they're easy to use, which means you don't have to have, you know, just undo the pack and take one out and wipe down. And of course, my cleaning rag, okay? You know, your cleaning rag isn't very important. You'll find it out a little bit later, okay? All right, so let's begin, okay? Now, I've already taken and designed out my stencil I'm gonna use, okay? Uh, this is a pith I'm going to use for another project I'm going to work on later. Uh, it's going to be very cool. It's actually going to be for a uh, hairpiece for a uh, prize. I'm going to be putting it onto a piece of stainless and I'm going to be making the uh, pin. I'm going to uh, hand forge the pin that goes through it later. It's going to be a prize for uh, Emerald Billy Jack's uh, treasure hunt which my hope is we have, are able to have it next April. All right, so you've taken your, okay, so let's begin, okay? First off, you've taken your vinyl, you've designed your pattern, and you've cut it out to the best of your ability. If you have a Cricut machine, I recommend that you use your Cricut machine for uh, making your uh, stencil pattern. Crickets are wonderful. Um, a lot of some of the things I've done, I've actually gone over and borrow, you know, borrow friends, I've made up the design myself, and then I just use their machine to uh, cut out the stencil I'm gonna be, that I would use for that item. Uh, so if you have one, wonderful. If you don't have one, and you have a friend that has one, um, buy them a cup of coffee or something, and you know, say, hey, can I use yours? That, is, that would be the best, uh, the most wonderful thing you could do. Okay, we're gonna put the stencil over here, okay? Or, the, sorry, there's a the panel over there, not the stencil, obviously. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take the, I want you to do your prepping first, okay? So, okay, first off, take your salt, okay? All right, now if you don't have a shot glass, that's okay. You don't have to, it's not going to hurt you that much if you don't have a shot glass, okay? I want you to take your shot glass, okay? I want you to fill it with, oh, about... about to uh, you know about a third fill okay it's not gonna take a huge amount okay okay and you're just gonna dump that straight into the into your glass okay you don't spill any because obviously you know the reason behind that uh okay take your water okay you're gonna fill this okay fill it over the glass obviously so you don't make a mess okay I'm going to fill it to close to the top, okay? If you spill over, don't worry, because obviously you're over the glass, and you're going to pour it in like so, okay? Okay, try to get every drop out so that we, you're not making a big mess in your workspace, okay? okay? Now, okay, make sure you put away the water in your... Ups and everything because you don't want to leave a mess. The, the reason is we're working with electricity, we don't want to have anybody getting hurt. All right, so take your metal, okay? Now, if you haven't done, now 
the reason I didn't tell you this to do this beforehand is because I want to make sure that everybody's hearing me say it, okay? Take your rubbing alcohol, okay? Break off on this, you know. If you don't have the little swabs, that's okay. Pour a little bit onto your cleaning cloth, the uh, rag that you're going to be using later, and then just take it. What you're going to do is you're basically going to take this, and you're going to go over this. You're going to go over your metal, okay? And we're going to go over, I'm going to move this over a little bit, okay? I'm going to tilt my camera up a little bit. I apologize for that. That way you guys can maybe see me a little bit easier. Okay. Oh, that's better. That's a little great. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to be cleaning this really good. Okay. Um, now the downside is obviously I didn't put my, I have rubber gloves and I would normally use, and that is to keep the oil off the metal. Okay. If you have a little bit of oil on the metal, don't right now, don't worry because you're going to be cleaning this again later. Okay. All right. You think the reason you're gonna, you want to do this is to just get all the oils off you can. It makes the surface easier to see, okay? And then just take it and just, I want you to go toss this into the garbage, okay? If you don't have a garbage sack nearby, just, uh, well, honestly, just, you probably should grab yourself a little sack really quick and use that for your garbage sack because you're going to be having a little garbage pile, okay? All right, so we're going to let this, let this dry for a couple seconds, okay? Because it's alcohol, it should dry pretty quick. Um, I'm going to, I want to make a one comment now that I've done that because something just, uh, really occurred to me. We're going to be doing metal etching. Okay. Now when we do the metal etching, it will be releasing some fumes. Okay. Um, do not be breathing this in. Okay. By that, I don't, I, I'm not meaning don't breathe at all while you're working on this, but as you're working on this and you're leaning over, don't take in you know, breathe deeply, okay? In fact, if you ha can, take the mask that you would use going out into uh, stores and things like that, and put that mask on while you're working on this, okay? Because you don't want to breathe in those fumes, okay? At least not, not deeply, especially, okay? Um, so when I'm working, you can't really see this, uh, but I have, you know, my mask. And so that will protect you from any harmful effects of doing the metal etching, okay? Because you're basically burning, acid burning into the metal. And those type of fumes are not something that you want to have, uh, be breathing in a lot of, okay? Uh, the alcohol, of course, you shouldn't really be breathing in you know, deeply either, just simply because, well, you shouldn't. Okay, so we've got, our, we have our metal, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our stencil, okay? And, now, if you've done this right, or we've used a, a Cricut machine, it should come off real easy, okay? Bear with me for a second, I apologize. As, but I did say if you've done this right, it should come off easy. Okay. So. While I'm peeling this off as carefully as I can, I uh, want to, now you can do this one two ways, okay? It depends on you're doing the stencil. If you want this to be metal showing, you just, you, then you would put this down and you'd go over it, around it with, over it and on it, around it with, when you, uh, when you, your etching tool. If you're wanting this to actually be what's etched into the metal, well, then you would use, uh, the stencil to make this become the negative space, okay? In art, there's two very important aspects of art. There is positive space and there's negative space. Positive space is what is mostly visible in art. Negative space is what is a blank area, usually black or white in most cases. And I apologize. Um, if you do not have a, and I have put, misplaced my knife. I apologize for that. I just put my knife away and I cannot figure out who it. If you do not happen to have 
a, uh, a Cricut machine. What you can do is you, you're going to use, once you draw out your pattern, you're going to use your X-Acto or crafting knife and gently cut out your stencil. Okay. And by gently, I mean just that, just be as careful as you can. Okay. Now, if you're not sure if you can do it, if you know, if you're working on something that you're just wanting to make sure you do it really well, and you're not sure if you can cut it out as careful, there's nothing wrong with going and asking somebody else to help you with it. Okay. Don't be afraid to, okay. A lot of people when they do projects. They feel that if they cannot, you know, that if they have to ask for help, it's wrong. And that's not true. Okay. Some of the most talented people I have ever met have asked people, okay? And you can see it. That is my little phoenix. Okay. Now. I'm going to do two things. As I said earlier, you can do it two ways. One is you can either lay it down on top of it or and make make this be your positive space. Okay. Or sorry. Or you can put the stencil down and you can make it a negative space. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, this was cut out to be like this. Well, we're going to turn that down just a little bit because I'm gonna do it like this, okay? So we're gonna cut off a little more of this so it will fit easier, see? And I'm gonna show you two different things. I didn't just, wasn't intending on, but that's like a really good, you know. I'll make this the, uh, I'll do it two different ways. I can do it without taking up too much time. Okay, so we are going to, Everybody indulge me for a second. We're going to, yes, indeed, carefully. Well, it's off the sheet. Now these are, when you do this on the, when you do this through a uh, Cricut, it will probably be a little bit easier because the Cricut actually has a sheet you can put on top of this that will um, light a transfer sheet. And the transfer sheet's job is to help you do this a lot easier, okay? Can I make a suggestion? Yes, go ahead. Clear tape. Yes, clear tape works, yes. Thank you, Andy Malona. Uh, clear tape works well too, because what it does, uh, is the same as the transferring tape. Basically it goes on top of it, and it pulls it off of it, okay? Remember how I just said the fact of, if you can't do, if you, you know, if you find yourself able to do something, don't be afraid to ask. This is a prime example, okay? I, this is my first time working with it, uh, stencil, making my own stencil without using a Cricut, okay? And I will tell you right off the bat. Oh, I just hate working with vinyl. Oh. I just take scotch tape and layer it, and that's how I do the transfers, because it's so, well, such a pain. Humorously, I used, um, I used duct tape and I used electrical tape before. Mm -hmm. That works Because good. electrical tape, well, electrical tape is basically not far off from vinyl in a way. Yeah. Okay, so we're, so we're gonna put this down, okay, as carefully as you can. When you put it on your vinyl, you gently put it down, okay? And you wanna put it down as carefully as you can, you know, easing it down, okay? Easing it down, make sure there's no bubbles or anything, or anything that is going to create an opening on it. So you got, see, I got a little, see, right there, prime example, I got a little bubble there, okay? So the best I can do is to smooth it out so it's not right there on the edge, and that will not allow, allow the, the acid, acidity liquid to go into the design, okay? There, okay? Okay, and uh, just for disclosure, okay, not my best work for drawing or cutting, so, yeah, all right. Now, um, two, th two little things, okay? One, you poured your liquid in, you created your acid solution, okay? Do not be afraid to, you know, waste a couple of these. 
because you're gonna stir it around every so often, okay? And the reason you're doing that is you want the salt to permeate into the water as much as possible because that doing so is going to give you the best reaction, okay? FYI, when you're done with this, make sure you dump this out as quickly as you can, okay? All right. Um, also, one of the items that I did not already talk about or uh, show is your polyurethane spray. Polyurethane spray is an optional point, but it is something I recommend if you are concerned about uh, environmental effects on your creation, okay? You can't, the reason is because the polyurethane will block out moisture, okay? And you are acid etching into, into metal. And of course, that later could be an issue involving uh, oxidation and such. So I will explain to the polyurethane when we're done, okay? All right, so now, uh, humorously, my persona for the amp guard is uh, a monk, obviously. Uh, my monk is part, sorry, I'm trying to find the plug. I'm trying to find my how plug to this. Okay, put my, uh, oh, that's wrong thing. My monk, if you were to pick one of the races in amp guard that you could be, my monk is actually a gnomish, which Everybody should just sit there and go, oh my gosh, we're watching a gnomish monk do acid etching. Don't worry. In this case, you know, the gnome isn't teaching you. I am. If the gnome was teaching you, there'd be a disclaimer about uh, make sure you're... You know, make sure you're not... Uh, <clears throat> around anything uh, explosive. Okay, so I, okay, <laughs> getting back on track. I just plugged in the battery charger, okay? Now the battery charger itself doesn't really need a whole lot to normal, okay? I'm gonna show this to you just for, for, for a second, okay? Okay, as you see it's plugged in, it's charged, okay? Now I'm gonna go down here to the button, see right here? I'm gonna pop it down to the very bottom. That reason I'm doing that is, that's one of the higher power, that gives it a little more power, okay? And we want that for this, okay? Now, okay? It makes me very, very clear, okay? I want everyone to be careful when they do this, okay? There's two ways you can work with this for the electricity. One is to use battery charge like I'm using. Another is to actually, you can take a uh, nine volt battery and take the plug from an old device you're not using anymore take out the connecting piece. You can strip the wires on it, okay? Just a little bit off the wires. And what you'll do is you'll take the positive wire, you'll take the positive wire from, from that, and you will put it on to the metal. Tape it down, and you're gonna use some electrical tape to tape it down with, okay? You'll then take the negative, and you'll be using You'll wrap that wire, the little bit of wire around your Q-tip, around the end right here, and before you dip it in, okay? Now, the, you'll have it plugged into your 9-volt battery, and that will allow you to etch. Now, that is a very safe way to do this, okay? And I can, of course, post later on the page uh, the link I found for that for you, too. Man, showing it is very, very good at this. Uh, the nine volt battery is this probably one of the most easiest, safest ways to do it because there's not much electricity coming through it, and therefore uh, less hazard. The downside is that the battery will drain very quickly, so you will probably get about half of this done before your battery drains out. Okay. Uh, one other point. Okay. If you're wanting to etch, you can you if you wanted to etch brass or something. What you can use also, instead of this, instead of the electrical etching that we're gonna do here, is you can use a mustard etching, okay? The vinegar inside the mustard will actually have a patina effect to the brass, okay? And as long as you're doing it with something like vinyl or something, so it won't spread through and we'll only get on the part you're wanting to do, 
it will turn out actually very nicely, okay? Now the downside of it is that you just etched into the brass. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to clean it off as soon as possible with your rag, okay? And you're going, and you might wanna use a little bit of alcohol as well to go over it. You will then definitely want to use the polyurethane spray to coat it. That will keep any more moisture from getting into it and doing any more of an oxidizing effect to it because you wanna keep the coloring on the brass. Okay, so we are going to start doing this, okay? All right, now you have your solution, right? Okay, we're gonna take a Q, we're gonna take some Q-tips. We're gonna put the Q-tips right here near us, okay? We're gonna have those nearby so they're easy to grab so we don't have any problems, okay? All right. So you're gonna take one of the Q-tips, you're gonna put it in here and that's just stir around when you need it, okay? All right, now, I want everybody to be very careful with this next part, please. You're going to take your you're going to take your positive, okay? And your negative, obviously, okay. All right. I want you to keep them very separate from each other, okay? All right. You're going to take your positive. And you're going to connect it to the bare metal, okay? All right, all right. Now the reason that we are doing this on wood is the fact that we want to keep away from as much, from as many items as we can that can do this, okay? Now, make sure I'm causing, I'm not getting myself injured any more than I would really like to, okay? I'm also going to be grabbing the gloves, okay? Now I'm using some, just some you know, leather work gloves that I use for my crafting. And that is because it's one of the easiest things to, uh, that was the easiest thing to grab, okay? Gloves of any sort that can give you a little bit of insulation to things is good, okay? See, I don't have my stick, okay? All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Q-tip, okay, that's it there, okay. okay, make sure it stays put, okay, there, okay, now, Look at, when we look at this right here, that's got a little bit of oxidation to it. That's because of the fact that I've been using it for just the metal etching. You can, you should, if you use, be cleaning it off with alcohol every so often, just to make sure that it's still keeping keep its connectivity, okay? This is still okay. Okay, so we're gonna take this. We're gonna put, we've already dipped it into the solution. Okay, it's nice and saturated. Make sure it's good and saturated. And now we're gonna start doing the metal etching, okay? Now, okay, it's gonna bubble a little bit. Now remember what I said, you have your mask on when you start this because the fumes come off are, are kind of toxic and you don't want to do anything to cause any harm to yourself, okay? So, okay, I'll hold it here, okay. In case you're hearing it bubble, okay? Now if this is bubbling, you just adjust this little, just put this down a little more and adjust it, okay? It's worked around until you start hearing the bubbling, okay? Now, if you have to, you have to readjust this. It's okay. Okay, you can. And what you're going to do is, because you're not touching it, with your bare hands, you can do this, okay? All right? You're going to make sure that you're keeping away, obviously, from the two pieces, okay? And that's okay. So, if you're here, we're just going to come up here. We're going to do this, okay?
Let me same check, make sure the battery power is connecting correctly. So it is good. Okay. And I'm gonna check this, make sure it's on there. Okay. Not getting a good connection up here, so we're going to try it. You can see string bubble, okay? Okay. Now, like I said, you do not want to breathe this in, okay? Okay. Now I get a little black thunder. I'm going to clean it off later when I get done, okay? Okay, mix it in a little more. Dab it off, don't be afraid to, to you know, dab it off, it's cool if you do, okay? Now, okay. The blood lamp cap. All those blacks that you're seeing pop up, Okay, is the metal being eaten, okay, by the acid, okay? Now, okay. You will be able to tell if the acid etching is working. You just see bubbling on the item you're etching, okay? Make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area, okay? Even with your mask, you wanna make sure you're doing that, okay? Go back and forth over the area, okay? When you have when you have design that has like jags in it and stuff, pull back to the item with the jags as you're doing it, that we're not going underneath the stencil itself, okay? All right. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna wipe, just kind of wipe off some of the gunk from the etching, okay? All right. We're not gonna use, we're not gonna clean it with the alcohol wipe yet because we're still etching, okay? All right. Okay, just one solution in there, okay? When I'm done, I'm, I'm gonna be cleaning this off with the alcohol, okay? Now you be careful, okay? Okay, you want to go over as much as you can, okay? Okay. Do not be afraid of taking a long time doing this, okay? It's better to take a while doing it. Make sure you have a good etching to it. And to rush and think you have it done, okay?
Should we have the head done on this? So we'll link so we're good there. Okay. Now, okay. Now I've done the one right here. That two G is gonna be the positive space. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the one that was the negative space, okay? Okay. I'm gonna leave that in there for a second. The reason I'm gonna do that is that I'm gonna be moving this over just slightly because we're gonna be doing that one, okay? And I wanna have enough space so that way I'm not touching these two together. Because obviously touching them together would give me a very big shock. And that would be bad. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the outside of the stencil now. Okay. And you just wait until it starts bubbling before you start moving it, okay? I swap it out again. Okay. Turn just a little bit so I can get to the second. So still use a little bit of that Q tip there so we can do that. Okay. Okay. That's right there. So you have to so why you be very careful with this. Okay. Okay. I accidentally touched the metal with the negative and uh, sparked a little bit. And the reason for that is because you, know, you have a positive touching it too. You be very careful about that, okay? Touching it with the Q-tip is not a big deal because It is still keeping the two from completing the circuit, okay? You wanna be very careful about it, okay? Make sure, if you want to, you can leave the Q-tips in here. You actually put the Q-tips inside the glass, let them just saturate with the salt water as much as you want, okay? Not gonna hurt it, okay? Okay, each Q-tip is only gonna be last for maybe 10 seconds of etching. Okay, because the saturation in them 
is going to end, stop, okay? So you will need to get more and more, more Q-tips, okay? Your best option is to have a bunch of them just like laying right out in the open to grab real easy, okay? I have a box over here, so that's why I'm not having a whole bunch of them laying out. Also, uh, because I'm teaching the class for you guys, I want to make sure I have enough room for you guys to see everything, okay? Leave that in there, let's saturate some. Leave that in there, let's saturate some. I'm not sure how many of these I'll have to use, so that's why I'm putting them in right now. So, there you go. Okay. There, okay. I want to be, be kind of clear about something if I can, okay? Um, if you are one of our younger M guardians, I would please like you very much to have your parents with you if you're going to attempt this, okay? In fact, I recommend that no one under at least 16 hours, I want to say about 18, should not be attempt, not be working with this unsupervised by an adult. Normally we don't do that. Normally we don't always give that kind of dis disclaimer on things we're doing, crafting and such. But this is a very big, this is a very big deal, okay? And I do not want any of our Amgarian family getting hurt, okay? It's not, we should never, ever do something we have to worry about. Now, so as you can tell, it's bubbling, and sure you can see the gunk, the black gunk, which is the uh, eaten off metal coming off. Even wearing a mask, I can smell a little, little bit, so. This is where the safety factor comes in important, okay? Take a look, see? Mmm, nasty. Yes. Okay. And that, children, is why you should always clean your ears. I'm joking, okay? Here, here she knows a little bit of that. Okay. So, I'm almost finished. The second one. I'm being very careful because of how close they are. See this, okay? Usually I'd have a bigger piece of metal. And the positive and negative connections would be more spread out, okay? Now I, of course, have a handle that I can Now the one right here with the negative space may not turn out too well because I, that is because the stencil just started to lift up on me. So I'm gonna say sorry for that, that happens, okay? Here, the longer you leave it on here, the better, the more etching will happen with it, okay? Okay, 
now. I'm going to stop now, okay? I'm going to do two things really quick, okay? One, I'm going to disconnect these from it. I'm going to attach them to the top of the charger base, which has its own uh, place for putting them so they keep them safe. Okay. I want you to really look right now, okay? See? I'm done with this with this power source. So I'm unplugging it. Okay. Want everybody see that because I want everybody to understand that when we're doing things like this, we need to make sure we're keeping things safe, okay? Now I'm going to clean off the negative post later with the alcohol swab and that will uh, keep it from oxidizing more. It'll clean it off. Uh, there's actually a uh, solution you can use to clean off your post like that. No, it is not Coca-Cola. So for anybody that's watching this and not ready to say that to me, please don't. That's right. Matthew needs his, his, uh, his go, go, go juice there, which is coffee right now. Okay, so we are done. Um, we're taking the oxidizing agent. We are moving it away from everything, especially the electrical power source. All right, okay. Now, okay, the metal might be a little warm, okay? So just barely touch it, see if it is. If it is, that's it, okay? Don't, don't, don't do anything else. Let it cool down, obviously, okay? But now we're to the point where it's cool enough to touch, so that means I can clean it. So what we're gonna do is, before we take the stencils off, we're gonna take there, okay? We're gonna do this to twofold, okay? One. Real quick. We're gonna clean it with the stencil on. Real quick, just so you know, it. Yeah. Uh, we have a little bit less than ten minutes to go, just in case. All right, no can, problem. I am actually. Work. No problem. Th cool. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. Okay, do. Yeah, we, you know, there's sometimes sometimes crafters can get long-winded, and I'm um, no different. Uh, okay, so we're gonna take this. Okay, use rubber gloves if you like. That's okay. All right. Okay, we're taking the alcohol wipe. The alcohol wipe. We're just going over it really quick. Okay, so we're getting as much stone as we can off of it. Okay. There. Okay. Okay. On that one, okay. See, bit, see, it's a lot cleaner now, okay. Doing the same with this one, okay. We're just kind of adding it because we're gonna. I know I messed up with this, okay, because I'm not really using this wood for anything, so we're just wiping it off the best we can for now, okay. Plus, that in the garbage. Now, we're gonna start with the positive, okay. The results are gonna vary for each person, okay. Now, uh, okay, let everybody see how it is right there, okay can. Okay, you see how it's, it's this particular color right here in the middle? Okay, well we're going to pull this off so you can see the difference between the two from the etching. Okay. Something just occurred to me is that I didn't keep this design as a, as a, as a pencil stencil. I should have. It's actually a cool little phoenix, you know. This would, look, this would actually look really cool on, on something I make and, and I just, ah, oh, I should have done that. Oh well, I'll have to reproduce it, I guess. Okay, now, sorry, okay. I'm going to move the other one so you can see the difference, okay? Then we're going to clean it really quick, okay? Now, the stencils aren't going to be reused, so don't worry about uh, trying to keep them nice and pretty and safe, okay? So, okay. There you go. Now we're going to take another alcohol wipe. We're going to quickly clean it because I've got like about probably maybe five minutes, not like only three minutes left, probably. Yeah, you have four minutes left. And we'd like to see it up close too because. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. Well, we're going to clean it really quick so we, you guys can get a better look at it, okay? Okay, there you go. Doing that. Okay. And then we're going to do this one, okay? Okay, now. Okay. I'm not going to spray it because that'll take too long, okay? But here's what it looks like. I'm going to clean this a little bit more, okay? Okay. Okay. All dressed for this. I'm going to put this up against me, guys. I'm sorry, but the way the lighting is, okay? Really hard to see. 
Okay, here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready? Here, let me pull over to say. Cool. You guys see it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, here. Let me tilt it down a little bit. How's how's that? That's good. Okay. Try not to catch light too much because. Okay. There. Okay. I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Okay. See if I can catch light just a little bit better. Yeah, sorry about the webcam, guys. Okay. I'm trying to catch this just right, and it's not. Okay, there. Ooh, cool. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Paul does. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a picture of this. I will post it. So you see it? Okay. But you can see the difference between the, between the negative and the positive spacing, okay? All right? Not too bad, huh? This is what you can do with metal etching, okay? Now, this can be, this is on stainless. Okay, and the reason I did it on stainless is because it looks really cool, okay? And stainless looks so incredible when you um, polish it up, okay? Okay, I'm gonna move right there, okay? There you go, all right? And I'm gonna do something really, 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 really quick, so just bear with me, okay? I think I can do this. I think I can zoom it. Okay, I'm gonna try to zoom it really quick. I guess not. I thought I could zoom this, but I can't. Just scream enhance. It works on TV. I don't even know how. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I'm sorry. This is new stuff for me. <laughs> Look, I should be saying something like I'm a, you know. Dang it. Dr. Not in here. Okay, so here is your first introduction to electro etching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, there is there. How's that? You can see a little bit better. Makes the Phoenix glow a little bit there. Okay, as I said, I'm going to be taking a picture later. I'm going to try doing this really quick, see if this will do, guys. Apologize. Give me a second. Okay, I'm going to bring this down around. Okay, see that, see if you guys see it better, huh? Okay, there, actually, there. And there we go. Hi. Hello. Hi, Anne. There you go. Cool. The phoenixes. Humorously, I could cut these off, shape them a little bit, and turn them into uh, Paladin and Anti-Paladin phoenixes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That is, I think, all the time I have for today. Okay. I want to thank Dan Calandra for allowing me to teach today and being kind of long-winded. And I want to thank uh, Dame Alona for handling our uh, webcam. Uh, you, Everyone, please be safe. And again, as always, I'm going to be just hoping and praying we get to meet again in the park very, very soon. This is uh, Lord Mithya Silverbow from Northern Lights saying thank you. And... Have a wonderful mid rain event. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording now.